Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of VT Workshop, we're going to be looking at some sample questions for aptitude. Now, aptitude is one of the very important subjects that will be asked in the VT exam, and it's it's a subject where a lot of people find what a lot which a lot of people find tricky. So therefore, this video is devoted to looking at aptitude questions and how to solve them effectively and in some cases in the easiest method possible. So let's start off with today's first question. In each question below are given two statements followed by two conclusions numbered one and two. You have to get, take the given two statements to be true even if they seem to be at variance from commonly known facts. Read the conclusion and then decide which of the given conclusions logically follows from the two given statements, disregarding commonly known facts. So this is one of those questions where the statement is true, considered true no matter what, and then using that statement we need to find whether the conclusions are true according to the statement. Now here are the statements. Raman is always successful. No fool is always successful. So the conclusions given are 1. Raman is a fool. 2. Raman is not a fool. This question is relatively simple because one of the statements goes that no fool is always successful. And the other statement is that Raman is always successful. So therefore, since both of these are universal statements, so therefore the universal negative, Raman is not a fool, has to be the correct statement. Raman is a fool would be wrong because if he is a fool, then according to the statement he will not be always successful. So therefore, the correct option turns out to be option B, only conclusion 2 follows. If conclusion 1 follows, then A is correct. If neither of them follow, then C is correct. And if both follow, then D is correct. However, in this particular case, only 2 follows. So therefore, option B turns out to be the right option. Let's look at another question. It's a similar question. So we have the similar instructions at the top. And let's look at the statements and conclusions. Some desks are caps. No cap is red. These are the two statements. The conclusions, some caps are desks, no desk is red. So we need to find out which of these conclusions follows from the statement. Now, um, let's look at the conclusions themselves. Conclusion 2 says, no desk is red. Um, this conclusion does not follow from the statements because in the statements it, sa it says that no cap is red so that's universal however the number of caps are dictated by a particular statement some desks are caps so whichever desks that are caps cannot be red however desks that are not caps can be red we do not know for sure if there are any red desks, but it is quite possible. So based on the two statements here, we cannot conclude that no desk is red. So this conclusion does not follow. What about conclusion number one? Some caps are desks. Well, if you look at the first statement, it says some desks are caps, which is a particular positive statement. Now, when you reverse it, as in when we use the inverse statement, it turns out to be some caps are desks, which is true. So since some of the given set of desks are called caps, we can also call those caps as desks. So we can still say some caps are desks. So both of these states, so what, conclusion one is something that can follow from the statements given. So therefore conclusion one is something that follows. So that means option A turns out to be the correct one only conclusion 1 follows from the two given statements. Conclusion 2 doesn't follow, so B is incorrect. And the other options also contain the fact that either conclusion 2 follows or conclusion 1 does not follow, so therefore option C and D turn out to be incorrect as well. The right option is option A. If only conclusion 1, some caps are desks, follows. Now let's look at a different type of question, which is, you know, basically completing the series. Complete the series by replacing the question mark given G4T, J9R, M20P, P43N, S90L, and then you have the question mark. We need to find out what the next 
uh, element in the series is going to be. Now this particular question is very easy. You can immediately guess that option B would be the right option. Why is that? Because if you look at the series itself, you can see that S90L, M20P, and P43N are already present. So therefore the other options would turn out to be incorrect because they're already present. Now how do we make sure that this, this is correct? Let's write down all of these elements and break them up into three parts. G, 4, T, J, 9, R, M, 20, P, P, 43, N, S, 90, L. Now if you look at the first letter and the third letter, you, you can notice a pattern. So J is two letters in front of G in the alphabet. I mean three letters in front of G in the alphabet, so therefore the relation plus three holds. The similar it's a similar story for M, P, and S in the first letters. So therefore the first letter of the last element would have to be three places above S in the alphabet. And if you calculate it, it turns out to be V. Hence option B is correct again. Now what about the third letters? If you looked at if you look at T and R, you see that R is two places behind T. Similarly P is two places behind R, N is two places behind P, L is two places behind N. So therefore the third letter for the last element would turn out to be two letters behind R. I mean behind L which is J. Again, you can see that option B turns out to be correct. But how on earth did you get 185 as the middle element? Well, that particular number series turns out to be tricky because it's a combination of multiplication as well as addition. If you look at the difference between 4 and 9, it's 5. Between 20 and 9, it's 11. Between 43 and 20, it's 47. I mean, between 43 and 20, it's um, 23. Between 90 and 43, it's 47. So, how exactly did you get these differences? Well, if you look at 9, 9 turns out to be 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 1. Similarly, 20 would be 9 times 2, plus 2. Now, using this particular relation, we can easily find out the, r the rest of the series. We, what we have to do is multiply the previous number by 2, and then add the, the respective whole number to that product. So for 20, so for the next number, 43, it'll be 20 times 2, and then add the next whole number, that's 3, which you'll get as 43. 43 times 2 plus 4 gives you 90. So this number, the last number that should be present here, would turn out to be 90 times 2 plus 5. 90 times 2 is 180, plus 5 gives you 185. So V185J is the right option for this question. You can guess that easily by saying that none of the other options all of the other options turn out to be already in the series, so B has to be the only option that fits. And even if and if you guess the letters right, then also you'll get from the options that B is correct. And in order, if you wanted to, and the number series is explained by this particular relation. Uh, multiply the previous number by two, and then start off with one, two, three. Add one, two, three, four to the product. Now let's look at another question. This is a question about direction test. So any question which involves directions, please make sure that you draw the cardinal system on any point of the page. That will help you in demarcating which direction the person goes or not. So let's look at the question now. Needed starts walking towards south. So let's consider A to be his initial point and he walks south. After walking 15 meters, he turns towards north. So therefore we understand that after 15 meters of walking south, at, at point B, 
he turns towards north, so he's going to walk right back up that line. And then he walks for 20 meters and turns towards east. So we've already traversed the 15 meters between B and A, and then he walks another 5 meters towards a new point, that's C. And from here, he turns east and walks 10 meters to a point D. And then finally from D, he turns towards south and walks 5 meters. So he reaches this point called E and he has walked 5 meters. We need to find out how far is he from the original position and in which direction. Now let's join the initial and final points with a dotted line. So you can see that we've formed a rectangle ACDE. Now in this rectangle ACDE, um, the parallel sides are equal, so the distance between AC and the distances AC and DE are five meters each, and the distances CD and AE are ten meters each. So we know that the distance of AE is ten meters. Now again, you could have gotten that without having to look at the diagram itself because all of the options contain ten meters. So the main question is which direction is he in? Now if you look at our cardinal system, right denotes east. Now if you see that the point E is directly to the east of A. So therefore, 10 meters east, option A, turns out to be the right option. If it was southeast, then it would go something like this. If, it's, if it was west, it would be in the completely opposite direction. And if it was northeast, it would have gone something like this. So since the direction turns out to be east, the cardinal direction east, so therefore option A, 10 meters east, is the right option. Now let's look at the final question for the day. The average age of eight men is increased by two years when one of them whose age is 20 is replaced by a new man. You need to find the age of the new man. Now, at first glance, it seems like there's very little that the question offers us in order to solve the question. However, if you look at it critically, you find that this these information, these bits of information are enough to solve it. How do we do that? Well, we'll have to use variables in order to denote the average ages. So let the original average age be x and the new average age after the uh, replacement of the personnel be x plus 2 because in the question it says the average age is increased by two years so we can denote the new average age as x plus two now average age is always calculated as the total age over the total number of people so for average age x and for x plus two the number of people is always eight the number of the total number does not change so we can calculate total age the, the original total age as x times 8 from the formula. Now similarly, the new total age is 8 times x plus 2. All right. So now we know so from the original, from the average ages, we found out the total ages for the original scenario and the new scenario. Now let's look at the new scenario. Now let's look at the difference between these two average ages. So differ difference between new and original total ages turns out to be 8x 8 times x plus 2 minus 8x, which becomes 8x plus 16 minus 8x, which is equal to 16. 
So the variables cancel each other out. So we know that the diff so now from this calculation we know that the difference between the new and the original total ages is 16. Now, how did the average age increase by two years? Man aged 20 was replaced by new man. Now this new man must increase the total age from um, 8x to 8x plus 16. So therefore this new man must add 16 years extra to the original uh, 20. So he should, ha should, should he should be 20 times, I mean 20 plus the difference between the um, total ages, which is 16. So the age of the new man turns out to be 20 plus 16, which is equal to 36. And if you look at the options, it's clear that option B is the right answer. So what did we do? We know the original average age. We considered that as x. We, all, we know the increment of the average age, and we added that to the original average age, which, so now this reads x plus 2. And we also know that aged, a man aged 20 was replaced by a new man in order to increase it by x plus 2. So we use the formula for average age in order to calculate total ages, 8x and 8, 8 times x plus 2. Um, we used these total ages to find the difference between the total ages, which turned out to be 16. So we know that the, di one, the person who was replaced, the person who replaced the original person, would turn out to, have s to be 16 years older than the person who was replaced. Now, if the person who was replaced is 20, then the new person would be 16 years older than that person. So that is 20 plus 16, which is 36. So that's how we solve this question using the minimum of information. So option B turns out to be the right option. Now that concludes this episode of Viti Workshop. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get more questions on aptitude or on Viti or on any other exams, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon, the notifications icon present below the video. So, until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.